Hello, this is Mocha Product Manager Martin Brennan, and today I'm going to show you how to use Mocha VR to patch and fix 360 stereo footage in the Google Jump format. So the Google Jump cameras produce a very high res stereo solution for a professional 360 video. However, the camera was not designed to create a seamless stitch at the nadir. So the challenge is repairing the bottom to create a seamless immersive experience rather than just leaving it blurry or whacking a big sticker on the pole and being done with it. This desert footage was shot by Spherica using their new Atlas VR rover. The Google Odyssey camera sitting on top weighs in at around 14.5 pounds, which is about 6.5 kilos, and Spherica's Atlas VR rover was moving the camera at a whopping 25 miles per hour with full hardware stabilisation. So this has removed the need to have any software stabilisation applied to this clip, and we only have to deal with the Nadir patch. So let's get started. This clip is almost 6K, and the common top-bottom format where both left and right eye views are in the same clip. Our goal here is to remove the camera blur and the camera down the bottom here, along with this big long shadow on the right. First up, to speed up our workflow considerably, we're going to be working with proxies, and you can see I've got one set up here already. So here I've just right clicked, gone to set proxy, gone to file, and pulled in my proxy file. I'm using a ProRes proxy here specifically uh, on the Mac, but on Windows we've found that DNX is the best format to use for speed versus quality, but you use what works best for you. What we don't recommend is using H.264 because that requires random access frames, which is great for playback in you know a web browser or your standard browser, but Inside an editing platform, because of those random access frames, it doesn't necessarily cache or play back that well. So it's not as good for effects or compositing. So that's why we recommend the larger but more efficient ProRes or DNX formats. So let's turn on our proxy just to make that a little bit faster. So we can see now we're actually moving along a little bit easier on the read. And we're going to use something called the lens patch method using Moku VR. So I'm going to come down to my composite here, choose effect, come down to Mocha, and choose Mocha VR. And this brings up our 5.6 panel. Now I should emphasize that I am using Mocha 5.6 because this gives us the stereo support. So anything earlier will not have these options in the plugin. So I'm going to choose top bottom because we are using the stereo top bottom format. And now we're set to work in stereo VR. And obviously we can swap the views if left and right is swapped. So I'm going to come down to module renders. And the lens patch method is an interesting one because we don't actually ever have to open the Mocha interface. It's all done entirely within the plugin interface itself. So I just have to turn on lens undistort, which is this one here. It's set by default when you load the plugin. We don't want lens distort yet. We're going to use that later, but we want lens undistort right now. So I'm going to choose that and choose render. So when we render this, you're going to see that it is going to render the front view of the camera. And just to make this a little bit even faster, I'm going to actually pull this down to half res so that we render a quick bit faster. So now I'm looking through the front view, I actually want to look at the Nadir so I can see my blurry camera. So I'm going to come to my view and choose Nadir, and there is my camera. And you can see this shadow moving off into the distance. So we want to be able to see all of this, so I'm going to tweak the settings a little bit to be able to see that. So the first thing I'm going to do is rotate the camera a little bit until we're about horizontal with that shadow. So about 30, and let's just set it to 30 to be specific. Okay, but we still can't see all the shadow because it's off in the distance. Now what we could do is actually rotate the camera to actually look at it, but an easier thing to do is look straight down and we will zoom out the field of view. So I'm gonna pull this up quite a bit and you can see that now sort of like it's panning out, but it's actually changing the field of view of the camera. And the further we change the field of view, the more we can see of this shadow. Now this is a little bit on the edge, so I'm gonna just change this to a nice even number, say 165. Right, now we can see all of the shadow 
in both views. So we've got our blurry little shape down here, and we've got our shadow going off into the distance. So this is stage one. We've done the first part that we need to do. We've applied our Mocha VR, and we've set lens understort with render on, and we've adjusted the camera view until we can see everything we want to remove near the nadir. Now we could do this in two patches. We could just remove the nadir pole and then apply another Mocha VR and do the shadow separately. But here we are just going to do it in one pass. So we've got that one. Now the first thing we need to do after applying that is pre-comp our layer because we're going to be doing some paintwork on top of this effect. So what we're going to do is go up to layer and go to pre-compose or you can use the command shift command c or shift control c on the windows let's go to pre-compose and we're going to call this something memorable so i'm going to call this desert mocha vr undistort because that's exactly what we've done we have undistorted the camera and i'm going to move all the attributes into the new composition and this is very important because we want that effect inside the composition Okay, now I'm going to go back to my project and I'm just going to move that pre-comp into my pre-comp folder. This is a little comp setup set up by John Dickerson. He was recommended in one of his tutorials and it's just a nice little template to keep everything nice and neat. So now that I've got my pre-comp, I could actually just duplicate this and then go ahead and draw a mask and then drag the mask down to comp over the original position of the camera. But that has a problem in that we're looking straight down at the distortion of the camera. And so moving anything from over here to down here immediately doesn't look as nice as doing a paint job. So what we're going to do instead is use the clone stamp tool inside After Effects. So to do a clone stamping, we need to first go into the layer mode for this comp. Now, normally you would do that with a normal footage layer by double clicking, but if we double click our pre-comp, it's just going to open that comp. So we need to right click it and go up to open layer. And this opens up our layer view for the composition. So now we can begin to use the clone tool to start cloning out our camera area and the shadow. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. So let's just press the Z key and zoom in. And we get a nice close up view there. I'm not going to get in too close because I want to be able to see the area I want to access with the clone tool. So for those unfamiliar with the clone tool, the way this works is we hold down the Alt key to sample an area and anywhere we click, it will paste from that sampled area. So the first thing I want to check is to make sure my duration is set to constant. This means that for any stroke, it's going to be set for an entire duration. So we want to not have a single frame because otherwise it's just going to paint for that one frame. And we don't want it to write on because we want to just keep it going for the entire shot because we're going to be reading it frame by frame by frame. The other thing we want to look at is to make sure that when we're cloning out that I'm not sampling from way over here and then trying to paint over here because as we're next to the camera, anything viewing out of the camera, the closer the stuff to the camera is, is going to have more detail. The stuff further away is going to have less detail. So I want to be cloning as close as possible to my camera so that I can get the right detail, but I've also got to try and avoid making it look repetitive. So I've got to sort of do a bit of work around here to make sure that that looks right. So let's start sampling. And now we can start working on this shadow. Now the shadow we can be a little bit more cavalier because it's getting further and further away from the camera. So I'm just literally going to clone on either side of it. Now I don't want to make it too blurry because that would defeat the purpose of what we're trying to do which is actually remove the blurriness at the patch. So I'm using quite a soft brush but I'm also trying to maintain the detail at the pole. 
because if we zoom out here a little bit, we can see that we've actually got this flaring coming out the back anyway, and we want to kind of keep that for color correction later if we need to. We can see a little bit of a line here, so we're just going to quickly try and patch that up. So let's just zoom in. Okay, so let's just zoom out again and have a look. So yeah, not perfect, but it'll do. So let's just turn off the effect for a second. So we've patched that out reasonably well. So now what we need to do is actually take all these strokes and clone them down to the bottom. And the thing is that we don't want to just clone the paint strokes directly because if we do that, we'll only be offsetting by the strokes and not where they're patching from. So we need to do a couple of steps to fix that up. So there's a number of ways we can clone these to do exact copy of what we've just done. And the first way is to just copy our paint and then just twirl that up. And I'm not gonna choose the effect category and just choose paste. And so I've got my paint two. So this paint two is an exact duplicate of paint one. In fact, if I select all of my clone layers, you'll see they're in exactly the same position. So what we could do is twirl down the top one while they're all selected come into transform and then just drag all these down into position. But that's going to be sort of at the whim. You want to get it fairly precise so it matches correctly in stereo. So what we can do instead is add the height divided by two to our value here. So in our position, we can either go ahead and plus 2880 because this is the half the height here 5760 or we can add a little mini expression which is probably the most accurate way to do this so if i just added 2880 here unfortunately it would not actually apply to all of these uniformly it would actually just add the value which is not what we want you just get this messed up blur so let's have a look at that if i do plus 2880 you're going to see this big mess of shapes now because every Y value has been changed to this number. So we don't want to do that. If we drag, all the numbers are changing uniformly, which is what we want, but it's not as accurate. So we're going to do a little mini expression here. I'm going to Option or Alt click the position. And under here, I'm just going to delete all of this and just type value plus, and I'm going to open a square bracket and choose zero, because I don't want the X value to change. And I'm going to do comma, open bracket, height, divided by two, close bracket, close square bracket. So let's break this down. What this is doing is value is saying, take the exact same value. So exactly the same value that we've got here. I'm then adding a new array to it. So an array is just a series of numbers, and this value happens to be an X and Y value, and they're just represented in square brackets. So when I say zero, I'm just saying access the first number in these values. So this is this value, because we don't want this to change, I'm just adding zero to it. The second value in my array is the height divided by two, which is exactly what we just talked about manually. So it's five, seven, Six zero divided by two, which is two eight eight zero. So this is whatever you change it to, it will always divide the height by two and add that to the y value. And then we close it all the brackets out, and then it will move that value. So when we click out, you can see now that clone stroke has moved down here. Then all we need to do is it apply it to all the other clone strokes. So I'm going to right click my position, choose copy expression only and we'll twirl that up and then I'm going to choose all of my other clone strokes all the way down to the bottom and just do paste so now all my clone strokes are in position but there's one more thing we need to do because at the moment our clone position is in the right place but the offset that it's taking it from is still referencing where we painted it from so let's go back up to our clone 30 position here and open our stroke options. Under our stroke options, we have this thing called clone source. And underneath it is the clone position. And we just need to do exactly what we just did for the clone transformation. I'm going to alt-click the position. 
and just paste in that value again. Now that clone offset is going to the right position in the other eye, not from the top view. So again, we just do the same thing. I'm going to copy the expression only, come down to stroke 29, go all the way down and shift select to choose clone one and just paste the offsets. So it's a subtle difference, but if you've got some varying difference in both eyes, it does make a difference to make sure that those are being picked from the same places. So now we have a clean view in both eyes. So now that we're all patched up, what we're going to do now is restore this back to its original place in our echo rectangular image. So the first thing I'm going to do is pre-comp this layer again. So we're going to come up to layer, choose pre-compose, and I'm going to call this desert rig patch. And again, we want to make sure all the attributes are in the new composition and choose OK. And once again, I'm going to make sure my rig patch is in my pre-comps just to keep everything neat and tidy. So now that we've got our pre-comp, let's just close our layer view and go back to the comp. We can put this back on top of our original image. So the first thing we need to do is actually go back to the original effect that we distorted. So I'm going to come back to my undistort pre-comp and double click it. Choose my desert footage layer and just copy the effect. Then I'm going to go back to my original comp and choose paste. Now what the first thing you're going to see is a weird distortion because we're actually distorting it again. We've got lens undistort. So all we need to do is switch back to lens distort. And now that's going to put our patch back into the right view. So let's go back to our full view. So now we have our patch back on. So this black area is actually an alpha. So we need to actually now comp this back on to the original footage. So I'm going to go back to my project, drop my desert layer below my patch layer, and now it fits seamlessly back into our image. So we can see the previous example with our blurry jump Nadir and the shadow, and the post image, which has the patched view directly on the shot. So you can see how this is a nice way to do it because it means that we're getting all that texture detail back in and retaining a nice seamless view when we look down for the headset. So now that we have this view, we can obviously go back and change anything that we don't like in the clone patch, or we can choose to go back to our full view of our proxy and then render out to file. So now when we look at the original versus the render side by side, you can see the major difference it makes. We've got all the lovely texture at the Nadir patch now, and we've gotten rid of the shadow and that blur where the camera used to be. So that wraps up the tutorial for today. If you want to know more about Spherica or the Atlas VR Rover, go to spherica.com where they have examples of some of the projects they've been working on. As always, if you have any questions, please do visit us at the Boris FX forums or grab new tutorials and information at borisfx.com.